What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced out chains, sweat proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. What's up? This is your boy Rampage Jackson, back once again on Jackson Podcast with my boy Bear, and we got Anthony Smith, a.k.a. Lionheart. Man, how you get that nickname? Was it from um, the, the movie or what? Yeah, yeah, it started at the, uh, with the Van Damme movie, but it sounds cool, but it was really, I was getting the shit kicked out of me a lot as an amateur. <laughs> I didn't know anything about fighting. Um, and I just, I would, I would just pull out crazy submissions at the end, like finishes, and just get the absolute shit beat out of me. Uh, and just, I just stayed in it, man. I just, I just, I don't know how to quit. So that's how I got it. An announcer just started calling me that. He was like, "You remember that Van Damme movie?" And I've been a big Van Damme fan, so yeah. it just stuck. Yeah, that's a great name. I, I love that. Um, I love that movie. If, if I could have chose my my fight name, or or if I would didn't have a name nickname before I came to MMA, I would have chose Action. Action, yeah, like the movie Action yeah, yeah. Jackson. How'd you get the nickname Rampage? Uh, my cousin named me that when I was uh, like eight years old because uh, I got the worst temper on the planet. <laughs> and and um, my my cousin and my my siblings it used to amuse them when I lost my temper because I I would hyperventilate, so they would always like uh, make me lose my temper and stuff, and I used to uh, beat them up and stuff like that, and uh, mm -hmm. I would get in trouble for it. So um, I couldn't hit them no more. So I would punched holes in the wall and stuff like that and my cousin would be like you just like that video game rampage rampage <laughs> so and it just stuck like it just that. stuck and then that was way before uh, mma or any of that way before stuff. Uh, and i tattooed it on my arm when i was 14 like the it was like the worst ghetto ass prison ass tattoo you ever want to see it was <laughs> it was uh indian indian thread and, and ink mm -hmm. and needle and i was like Ugh. and i tattooed it on my arm and um like when I was 14 and when I started wrestling, um, when I was 17, was, you could see it was all ghetto. And that's when uh, people outside of my family started calling me Rampage. It, it stuck. That's wild. Yeah. That's why I've always wondered that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it stuck. What, what about your tattoo? You you got a lot of ink over there. What's going yeah. On? Yeah. So my first one, I got like the typical wrestler tattoo with his last name on my, you know, I got my last name on my back. <laughs> uh, and then I just started getting some of the most ridiculous things in the world, man. I... My mom signed for like my first tattoo when I was 14 and I just never stopped. No way. You had yeah. your first one when you were 14 too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My mom, uh, I, I was getting ready to wrestle at districts and I, I wasn't that good. I think I was a freshman and she was like, if you make it to state, I'll let you get a tattoo. And I don't think she ever thought I was going to. And I did well. <laughs> and I did well. And I've just been getting tattooed ever since. Uh, you don't got no girl's name and none tattooed on you. No, no, no. You haven't no, made that mistake. No, huh? no girl's name. Do so you regret any of your tattoos though? A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. I got... I don't know, a couple, you know, stupid tribals. And one time I was uh I was at this house party. I grew up in Nebraska, so I was at this house party way out in the country and someone that was like at the house just had like a tattoo machine and uh -huh. we were just all just hammered. I was like maybe eighteen or nineteen and we were just all tattooing my my ribs and stuff. And it, it looked like a like the Grinch's Christmas tree. Uh -huh. It looked so stupid. You covered it up. Yeah, it's been covered. And yeah. So I, there's, I got a bunch of stuff I'm like trying to cover up and yeah, fix. I, yeah, I covered up that that ghetto ass rampage. <laughs> after, like, you should have kept it. I, I know somebody told me that I should have kept it, but I think my first fight in Marvin when I fought Marvin Eastman and, and uh, King of the Cage, you can probably see it. But I I think right right before I went to Pride or something, I, I covered it up. I'm like, man, this I was I was embarrassed about it for some strange. It looked really bad though, bro. Yeah, my, my ribs looked really bad. There's a couple like uh like me on the scale in the UFC, and I'm like, got my hands up and I got that stupid ass tattoo. Hey, hey, hey make sure we find <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, man. It looks so bad. We gotta pull that clip yeah, up. We yeah, gotta it looks it. so bad. It looks so bad. I can't believe I left it as long as I did. I got one that I that I can't cover up. I got I got tattooed in like an apartment drunk, like long time ago. I was like a teenager. 
but I got like mama on the inside of my oh, arm. That's, that's, that's but cool, I just can't, cool. I couldn't bring myself no, 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 to cover it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, she thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I was thinking about getting a tattoo of a ruler on my penis, but then I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't think it's long enough for that. So. Nah. So we, I, gotta, we gotta do a size comparison before you start doing all that. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. That's been crazy, huh? Or walk in here and be like, yo, it's just what your friend four inch. I'm like, where you got that from? Whoa, whoa. You can't have that. That'd be bad. I would like to think. I'm, I'm, I'm longer than four inches. No, maybe you are. I don't know. I don't. I would like to think so. You could do a size comparison. Bring it back to the pod tomorrow. Let us know where you're at. All right. Okay. We, you know, we, we have a very special guest, and the reason why is he has a fight. Right. So this is almost like an emergency podcast. Oh, it's another emergency another podcast. Another emergency podcast. I think we might have to just term this an emergency podcast. You could let Jimmy know in the back. This might be an emergency podcast. <laughs> but he has a big fight. I, I hit him up. He was like, "Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, leg two legends sitting at a table is always great." And uh, you know. You have a big fight, and a lot of the internet, what they're saying right now is, is he being a company man? Does he love fighting? Is he doing this because he wants to kill someone in the ring? Like, what? why is he taking this fight? You know, this guy's been on a tear lately. What, what's the What's the deal? What, give us the truth. Well, first of all, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, and I, as, as soon as I knew Rampage was going to be here, like... I don't. I don't want to be, you know, the douchebag here, but like you've been my favorite fighter since oh, I, since I the very first pay per view I ever watched. Like I'd watched some of the old like Pride stuff, like and just found DVDs and gone like convinced my grandpa to buy me like Blockbuster, go to take me to Blockbuster Damn, and rent he's like aging the, me right the now. old. Well, no, like these are like the original e UFCs. Oh, I'd okay, watch, okay. But I watched you in like in Pride. It, but the very first pay per view I ever like pitched in money for was when you knocked out Chuckle Down. Oh wow, yeah. Um, and then there was when I first started training. There was a guy in Omaha that had bounced out and like back and forth from here and had trained with you a little bit. His name was Demetrius Worlds. Is he a tall black guy? Tall black guy. I know exactly. Yeah, He's yeah, the only yeah. one dude I trained with yep. out there. I think I had to kick his ass. I think some, some, if probably. My, yeah, I, if my memory <laughs> serves me correctly, like we was cool and something happened in training or something, I think I had to kick his ass. Probably. <laughs> I think probably. He, you he know was, him he was wild. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When I was younger, yeah, when I, cause I started when I was 17. So it's been a long time since I was around Demetrius, but, um, I had watched the pay-per-view and then like had watched you fight and then Demetrius had trained with you. And it was just like, I don't know. It was like the coolest thing in the world to me. So, right, that's um, what's up, man. and that's kind of like what, you know, kind of started my journey. But, uh, anyways, as far as the fight goes, you know, I, I don't really have to fight anymore. You know, I got, I got a really successful, you know, like thing going with ESPN and working the desk and I, I just can't shake this title thing. Like it's, it's been the only thing that's, drove me for you know since 2006 it's all i've wanted i just want that big shiny gold belt and and i just i don't know i just can't i can't shake it and any especially with the way the division is right now if i can put a couple together and and get back to another title fight um i think the fight with john jones has like plagued me for a long time where i just he just made me feel so fucking stupid in there you know it just didn't i don't know if it was it was just maybe it was a bit early i hadn't been in the weight class long enough maybe but I don't know. I just didn't feel like if I'd have gone in there and really competed and felt like that was the best I could have been, maybe I'd be able to shake it a little bit and say, listen, I like, that was, that was all I had. <clears throat> and, and I, and I gave it my best, but I just didn't feel like that when I left there. Like I, I could have done better. I had, I am better. I had more. Um, how did I, that fight, how did that fight go? Like refresh my, my memory. Cause I, well, I lost the decision. Um, and it, it, I don't know, man, he just neutralized me, you know, like everything I, Everything I thought was going to happen, happened. Um, but there was a lot of things that I was worried about that I shouldn't have been worried about. I was, you know, we, we spent weeks and weeks and weeks on his 85-inch reach and, you know, his boxing. And, and then I get in there and it's like the boxing is not an issue. Um, I didn't really, he's not, he's not really a boxer, so he doesn't use his reach like that with his hands. I, I remember we kind of just glossed over the kicking game. Like, oh, yeah, we'll just deal with that. And he just ate me up in the kicking game. I just couldn't get set. And every time I'd want to, like, really set my feet and start throwing, you know, he'd hit me with that front kick to the body and hit me with the oblique kick. And then he'd spin. And then you'd try to reset. And he'd, he'd start it. It's like that same process yeah, over and I over and over. I hated that oblique kick. Yeah. I was, hated that. It was stressful. Yeah. It was I, stressful. We try to train for it. And I try to, like, um, you know how you check a Muay Thai kick with your knee? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we we try to do for it. But. He was he was fast and he kicked my knee back one time. I hated him for that for years. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was it was just I don't I don't know. He just neutralized everything. Everything that I was good at, he just took away from me, and I was so it just left me kind of just treading water the whole time. Like, did he did he poke you in the eye? He never did. He did hit me with a uh, an illegal knee though. Um, I was grounded and just and 
I mean, he starched me and he, he lost two points for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was, you know, he won every round. He so, was so far ahead. Yeah, yeah, he was far ahead. But well, at least you took him to a decision. Like he, mm-hmm. um, he gave me my second submission loss. He, um, guillotined me, uh, red naked choke Rear-naked me. Choke, yeah. yeah. And that, that didn't set well with me. Um, I went into that fight with him like overly confident. I'd never, I've never lost a fight being in that good of a shape. Mm-hmm. I, I trained in uh, Colorado for the whole camp, and that was my first time taking supplements. And I was I was running like six miles. Normally, I wouldn't run no more than three. And I was like, mm-hmm. man, there's no way this kid's going to beat me. Yeah, no right. way. But what we was worried about was his kicks. We was worried about his kicks. So the whole time training camp, they said, when he turns southpaw, he's going to kick this way. And then he turned... And that was like a little bit too much. And I had a tall guy to spar with, but I didn't have a tall guy to do jujitsu with. Right. Yeah. He, he didn't, he wouldn't really grapple with me. He wouldn't grapple with me at all. Like as, as soon as we started engaging the grappling, when I was trying to pull him in, he just, he just pulled me back to my feet. He's a real smart fighter. He's very smart. Yeah. Very I, I, smart. I think it's, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying because he's such an idiot. Yeah. Kind of other places, you yeah. know what I mean? And I and I, I've never judged John really for the most part for things he's done outside the octagon. You know, I, I, some of it I've done myself. I've, I've party too hard. I've acted like an idiot. I've you know I've I've been in a drinking and driving accident. Like I've I've done a lot of dumb shit. But so I've tried not to. I really don't speak too much on the other stuff that he does. But yeah. I guess I mean the fact is that he just doesn't make the smartest decisions all the time outside of fighting. Yeah. When he's in there though, that dude never misses. I think his his yeah. mind, I think his mind is really strong. I, I've said this before. I, I think I think it I think it's his mind. He, yeah. he's, he like when we train in this stuff, we think we just train in our bodies and stuff like that. We train in our minds as well. And I think John Jones has like one of the strongest minds in MMA. That's my opinion. I do I I mean I totally agree. He's he, he makes he's really well coached too. Like that was another thing that threw me off when we were in there. That like if his coaches weren't like giving him instructions, he goes into like a holding pattern where it's like the oblique kick and then he attacks your body and then he circles out and he just does it. And then as soon as they call something, he's right into work. Like he, he's he, I don't know, he's he's almost like a dog. Like he just does as he's told and he does it right then. Mm. And it, do, it's hard to stop. Do you ever look back at your career and say, hey, you know, if you would have taken that illegal knee, that DQ and been a champion would have changed the the career outlook or where you're at or do you ever think about that no man i I, i've never second guessed that decision ever um and i know a lot of people i mean look at aljo though look what Mm -hmm. look look what aljo's going through like when Mm -hmm. he did take the dq um i think that every everything that i said before that like i'll fight anybody any place anytime and and I'll never give up. And I got this Lionheart nickname. All that goes out the window if you take an easy DQ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I was losing anyways. You know, like had I been ahead, maybe that's a different story. And step back and say, listen, like now now this playing field isn't even anymore, and I was already winning. Maybe that's a different conversation. But, but then you have to say it out loud. Yeah, honest it, question: Since you took the legal knee and Al- Aljo took the legal knee, um, do you think that? It was a smart decision for him. You know, how do you feel about that what the fans are saying about him? Do you think that he could have kept going? Did it affect you? In uh, your fight? Yeah, I was hurt. I was hurt for sure. But I don't know because then he went on to like, I think what's not fair with Aljo is he went on to win the rematch, looked really good, and then won more fights after that and kind of solidified himself as champion. But he's never going to, he's always, people are always going to flash back to that. So I think it's unfair. Yeah. Um, but the Aljamain, you know, like that situation solidifies my decision mm-hmm. because I think that I didn't go on and win a title after that. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I guess, have the success as a champion that Aljamain had after that. So like all mine is just built on my word and doing what I say I'm going to do and, and showing up and being in those tough situations and tough fights. So I think I would have lost all that. I think I made more money by not taking the illegal knee or by not taking the DQ and then moving on. And like now as an analyst, I can stand up there you know, like on my own two feet. And if I got something to say about someone that's in the octagon, they can't really say anything back right. to me. Right. I agree. I love, I've, I mean, I've kind of walked that walk. He, he says it perfectly. I think Aljo gets the, the, you know, he, he bears a lot of burden, which people don't give him the credit of like, look at dude, the guy came back rematch looked phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And then one more fights. Like he said it perfectly, but no one gives him that credit because of the route he got there. He doesn't like the word controversial. We just had him in here. Yeah. And I said, probably one of the most controversial champions of all time. It's not the way his his fighting or his pedigree or his style has nothing to do with that. It's just the way you get the belt is obviously a very impactful part of your career. Right. And so it's like, but he's one of the best in his division and Mm -hmm. was phenomenal. Do you look at fighting right now? Because, you know, it's 
not not an indecision, but you are kind of like one foot in, one foot out in a way where you have such a successful career as this analyst and people are now taking you very seriously with how you talk about fighting and you're becoming like a voice of the MMA community. Does that affect like your indecision to be like, hey, I still need to train, I still need to fight? Or is that one foot in, one foot out no, type of thing? No, I, I think just as, I'm, as I've gotten older, you know, I got four kids and, and a wife and like, I think that's the part that's pulling me out a little bit is like, I want to be in the gym less because I want to be at my, you know, I have a six-year-old daughter that wrestles. I want to, I'm coaching a wrestling team. And then I got two older daughters that play volleyball and basketball. So I want to not miss all that stuff. So like I used to not fight in the summertime to spend time with my kids. And now I'm like, all right, now I don't want to fight in the wintertime because I want to be at wrestling, volleyball and basketball. And they're like, well, when the fuck do you want to fight? <laughs> in the fall. <laughs> like I'm running out of time to play. I got time. Because I'm just trying to you yeah. know, do the, do the thing with my kids. But I, oddly enough, I think I'm kind of opposite from a lot of fighters. I think a lot of fighters, people are trying to stop them from fighting and, and force them into something else because maybe fighting isn't working anymore. And I'm trying to stay in fighting when everyone else is like ESPN would like me to retire mm -hmm. and just be full time at the desk. And the UFC would rather I had more time to work the desk and transition my way to the, the, the cage side commentary. Mm -hmm. And I'm like trying to keep myself in the octagon. It's not because I'm, you know, I'm not like losing it. It's just, I think that other people want me in other places that benefits them, I think, a little bit more. Um, and I think as soon as – if I can win a title, I'll be I'll be happy to walk away. I just – I don't know, man. You know, I talked to Weidman a lot and Stipe, and they both have said that when they won it, they both had like a – like that was it kind of feeling, you know, like maybe it wasn't all they thought it was going to be. And I suspect that will probably be the same, but I just don't know that I'll ever be able to to quit without – I don't know what I'll, I don't know. I don't know what it'll take for me to have to quit if I don't ever win one. If you win the belt, would you retire right then and there and then go? No, I'd probably defend it till I lost it or try. I mean, that'd be my that'd be my plan, for sure. Then I mean, go back to the desk. Yeah, yeah, and just because I don't know. Then there's, then you can kind of say you've done it all. Like yeah. I've I've done all the main events. I've got the bonuses. I've got the the nice cushy job with ESPN. It's just the title. It's the only thing that's left, you know. Yeah, but if you win the title, then you retire before like say let's just say you hate to say you're going to lose it and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but you get the title and, and then you def, you retire and then you go back to the desk that, that'll that give you like that give you more credibility when it's just yeah and then you miss those pay-per-view points so <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, <laughs> and then you finally get the belt and that's when you get to dig a little deeper on the cards yeah. and you get the, that money yeah lionheart standing on business yeah, yeah. he <laughs> don't want that paper yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that ain't gonna work for me champ <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need those pay-per-view points yeah, yeah, before I hit a retirement yeah, yeah. at least one yeah, you gotta get one. those pay-per-view points like, like, one time like, forget one defending time. it I just yeah. want the pay-per-view points yeah, yeah. Right. at this point he already proved himself in the ring I mean with the with the Johnny Walker fight though you kind of like took off your gloves looked like you were gonna retire a couple months later you come back you get the W. Man, like, that shit was stupid. What was that? Yes, yeah, so I sometimes I'm the most inconsistent motherfucker around. <laughs> I don't get it. Sometimes I show up like when I fought Gustafson and just lights out. Like it was a world beat. I would have beat anybody in the world that night, including John that night. But then sometimes I show up and I just shit the bed. I don't I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a focus and I don't know. So I think sometimes this is when like the desk and all the other stuff hurt me because mm -hmm. I I don't have to do this. So like it, I don't know. I think I just get distracted sometimes and it, maybe, and maybe not just distracted in life, but I, I think I take my eye off the ball a little bit. And sometimes guys can sneak behind the line when I'm not paying attention. So if I got a lot going on, I'm working here, I'm doing this. I got this podcast. I got traveling here. I'm going on vacation with my kids. And then I jump into training camp and then I'm just trying to get through it. Like I'm just, you know, like before I used to just every day, you know, just one foot in front of the other and we just try to get better. Sometimes I'm just trying to make it through it. Yeah. And I think Johnny Walker was one of those things where I just, I didn't really see anywhere he was super dangerous. Like he's big and he's strong, but everybody's big and strong at this weight class. I'm always going to be one of the smaller guys at 205. And so I just didn't worry too much about it. And then, you know, after the first round, my leg was trashed. And I was like, well, fuck. Well, late now, like now, now, now I'm worried about it and it's too late because now I'm already compromised and my leg's already trashed. So uh, Johnny did a great job. He had a good game plan. Um, but I was pissed. That's what always yeah. got me when I wasn't worried about my opponent. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. That's why I want to try boxing because I've been fighting for so long. It's like it, even people that I should be worried about, I wasn't worried about. I've done it too mm -hmm. much. But in boxing, I think that, you know, I'd be worried. I'd be, I have that little, that, that little nervousness. 
Yeah, like that feeling in your stomach. Yeah. Like, like Johnny Walker didn't keep me up at night. Yeah. No? It, it did, no, not really. He what? still doesn't. Like, I mean, I just look at skill sets. Like, John Jones kept me up at night because he did so many good things. Like, Khalil Roundtree this weekend keeps me, gives me, like, that little pit in my stomach a little bit. Like, he's just so explosive and so dangerous and fast. Like, you can't take your eye off the ball there. He'll put you to sleep in front of the whole world. Yeah, that guy, he got those oblique kicks, too. Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did a movie with that guy. Did really? you? Yeah, yeah. It was me, him, Anderson Silva, AJ McKee. No shit. Yeah. Um, Trench from Naughty by Nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was called Lord of the Streets. What were you in the movie? I was the bad guy. I, my character was kind of <laughs> like um, Suge Knight uh, mixed with, um, what's that What's that character name that um, Wesley Snipes played in? Uh, Blade? He played him. No, no, not play. What's that movie? Um, when he, uh, you know, my memory's really bad. Uh, that movie he did with Am I My Brother's oh, Keeper? White Man Can't Jump. No, God damn it! The uh, movie he he he. Uh, 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 New Jack City. New, oh, Jack, New City. Jack City. Yeah, what was yeah, his yeah. name in New Jack City? Ah, whatever. I don't remember. That. Nah, yeah, he's but too young. How old are you? Thirty-five. Oh, goddamn! He's young as hell. Yeah, he's in the prime right now. He's, he's in that, his prime. Do you, you say that to yourself? Like you are kind of like in your prime. It's not like you're not nowhere near close. To, Depends on retire. it depends it depends on the room I'm in. You know, like when I'm in the gym, you know, other than Dustin Jacoby, I'm the oldest guy in the gym. So it's a whole bunch of guys in their younger twenties that are just getting going. So I'm like the old guy. But you it, fuck them up though, yeah. don't you? Uh, every day. Yeah. Cause, every day. Because you at you at 35, you at you at the strongest you ever be. Mm-hmm. You're at the best, you're at your peak right now. But then when I'm you know, around guys that have been doing this a long time, I'm I they make me feel like, yeah, you know what? I am young. Not that goddamn old, but I spend six weeks in training camp with all these young, you know, up and comers yeah. that make me feel old as shit. Yeah, you, you, had, you we had, just had a Hendo in here. He's yeah, just, he's like forty-five, so he said, forty-eight. When no, he his said last he was fifty, fight. he said he was. His I don't know how old he was his last fight, but he said he was fifty-three today. Yeah, he's fifty-three, wow. but I think his last fight he was, it was like forty-four, 45 or 46, forty-four, forty-five. Yeah, something yeah. around there. Like it's crazy. Where you got another ten years on you? Yeah, I don't know about that. It's I got a lot he, of fights. How many the, fights you got? 54. Damn, that's a lot of fights. Pro, 55. Pro fights. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had 25 amateur fights still. Yeah, 25 amateur fights? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of yeah. fights. Wow. I was like fighting every weekend there for a while. Wow. I used a- to fight in like Kansas City on Friday and then Sioux City, Iowa on Saturday. Wow, that's impressive. I've never heard of anybody in MMA having that many amateur fights. a ton fights. of fights. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They had a bunch. That have- was kind of a normal thing in the Midwest. Oh, for real? Yeah, there's a lot of guys that had around that or some had, some had more. Crazy. I wanted my son to get a bunch of amateur fights, but he wouldn't listen to me. I yeah, told him like, should, yeah, that sounds real good. I told him he should get he should get a lot of amateur fights, but he he wouldn't listen. I only had like uh, two amateur fights before I went pro. Yeah, well, I didn't even know you could really make that much. Like, I had no intention of making money. I just liked I liked the fighting thing. I just thought it was cool and and I enjoyed it. So I just kept doing it, and then eventually they were like, hey, you know, you could like turn pro. I'm like, damn, how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, what do we got? like? Just show up and get paid. All right, I can do that. Yeah. Rampage, you were talking about the oblique kick, and I know you always talk about certain technique and the way people kick and you're very critical in the John Jones kick and oh, the yeah. stylizing of that. Obviously Khalil has that same concept and that same kick. Mm-hmm. You going into this fight, you feel like that kick should be banned. Is it fair game? Do you think it's a a, a proper kick for fighters? I, I hate it. I hate it just because you can change someone's career completely. Like, I mean, I, I understand like the argument is, well, you can kick people in the face and you can elbow people in the face likely you're not going to change the rest of somebody's life. You know what I mean? You, you, you land one of those kicks like that. I think Khalil finished some guy like that with mm-hmm. a, like, I don't think that dude's been right ever since. Um, so, so I don't like it, but it is, it's a hard argument to make Yeah. Um, that you can kick someone in the face, but you can't kick their leg. I mean, I get the argument, but I don't like it either. Um, and I got bad knees. So yeah. I, I just don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I feel like as long as I can keep real close to Khalil, I can probably deal with it. But, if I could choose, I'd rather get rid of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that- There's a lot of rules I would probably change, though. Like, what else? What other rules do you think? I really like the pride rules. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I like the head, like the knees and kicks to grounded opponents. Yeah. I think that changes the whole- gra- I think that changes the entire game as far as grappling goes. And I don't really care too much about- I would probably keep the elbows, but if we got rid of them- If we can make that trade, like knees and kicks to a grounded opponent, but no elbows, I would make that trade for sure. Yeah, it keep the fight- fights from being so bloody. Yeah. I really didn't like the elbows that much. Hmm. Really? No, I don't. I, I don't want other people bleeding on me. Do <laughs> you see most of my fights? I try not to make them bleed. <laughs> if they don't bleed. You knock them out. <laughs> well, I got that, a couple elbow knockouts. Is that where the throw comes from? You don't want him to bleed. Yeah, you gotta just, snap his neck. Yeah, just knock him out. Well, I hate. I hate getting cut too. Yeah. I hate it. I don't like it. Lasts forever yeah. now. 
You what? The cuts, the scars, you, you scar yeah, for life. Forever. Well, forever. And, and they just hurt so goddamn bad all the time. Like, uh. be a week later and you're like rolling over in bed. And it hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. I don't mind I don't mind the getting punched and all that yeah. stuff, but like the elbows, you know, like get hit with the elbow and it's just it's like you got to rub it in the middle of the fight. No, nah, I never I, did. I hate that shit. I never, I never, I never felt that stuff in the fight. Either. It's just elbows. Nothing else. I've never had anything really hurt, but the elbows. Every it's time crazy. I've been hit with an elbow, I just want, I just need to rub it. That's did it itch it. a little bit or something? Yeah, like it makes you want to, I don't know. It just feels, uh, Hodger Gracie. Open my face all the way up in strike force. And I, every morning when I get I can see it in the mirror, it drives I hate it. You know, this scar right here when I when I when I um power bomb Arona, uh, I got stitches right there in the in a in a back room, right? And they 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 had biodegradable stitches and, mm -hmm. and regular. So I had 30 stitches, 15 on the inside, 15 on the out. And those dumbasses put the biodegradable ones on the outside and put the regular <laughs> stitches on the inside. Oh, wow. So so like like 10, 12 years later. I'm going and getting, and the stitches came through my eye. I'm pulling them with a oh. tweeze. I'm pulling them out. The stitches, oh. they was inside of my eye. Court, Court McGee just had that happen. He showed a picture, like a fight he had in like 08, yeah. and they were like stitching him up. And then this was like just, I don't know, four or five months ago, and he was pulling stitches out that that never like, you know, disintegrated. Like, disintegrated. Yeah. They, they had it backwards again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Crazy. It there, was a, there was a few years where you guys were both in the UFC at the same time. Was there ever a potential... Fight no, between you two. I, this is my, today my first time even meeting you, right? Um, no, no I, at the MMA awards. Oh, one God time we it. met real quick, oh, my maybe bad. two years ago. Uh, you but know, it was I, quick. It was like in uh, passing. Oh, my bad. You know, I, 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 my no, I was being, I was being a pussy. You were like talking to a bunch of people, and I was like hyping myself up, like I'm gonna go say what's up, and like we just walked by and I fist bumped you real quick, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> it was fast. Uh, okay, yeah, it was quick. He's normally, an but I was, I was at 85. Yeah. Um, when was your last UFC fight? Shit, when I lost a damn. Glover, I don't remember what year that was. I'm bad with the years. Yeah, I don't remember either. Yeah. But I was at 85. Yeah, and maybe if we would, if we would have been in the UFC at the same time, I would have still been at middleweight. Oh, uh, yeah. at that time, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was uh 2000. I gotta look. 2014. You lost to Glover. Yep my last my last fight. I don't remember in the, that. I lost to him to uh, to decision. I was supposed to fight him in Brazil, but I got injured. And I had to back out of the fight because um, when I fought Ryan Bader, I, I was injured, and I told Dana, and then uh, I still fought him because in Japan I, I would never pull out a fight in Japan. And Dana was like, "Oh, I don't know what's wrong, with Rampage. Maybe he don't have it in him anymore." I was like, "Oh man, Damn. can't believe you said that, Dana." So, so my next fight, uh, uh, I think I was fighting Glover, and I got injured in Brazil. I was training for him. So I pulled out. Then I, I think I fought him in in Chicago. I've never won a fight in Chicago. Really? <laughs> never. I think I've only fought in Chicago. One. I fought Rashad in Chicago? Chicago. Yeah. Did you beat Rashad? I did. Yeah, it was Rashad's last UFC fight. Uh, what it was decision or? No, it was a quick knockout. What you yeah. knocked out Rashad? Yeah, and now we're like tight. Yeah, no, really? yeah. yeah now we're I tight. wanted to knock him out so bad. It yeah, was a yeah, good knockout. Great knockout. Now Mr. Rashad's yeah. like my mentor now. Yeah. Really? He's a totally different dude than he used to be, though. He's he's all he's all zen. He's all zen. Yeah, he's yeah. Earth crystals and yeah, yeah. How's he yeah. your mentor? Uh so I started when I started working the desk, he was already on the desk. Mm. So he kind of just showed me the ropes and, and he's like a he's like an old shaman now, you know? Like Rashad Evans? Yeah, like talking about life and feelings and it's, he's he's way different. He Did went, you knock that into him? You no, he went, he went in on the, one of those DMT trips. Oh, wow. What's yeah. DMT? That's like a yeah. uh, acid? It's like mushrooms mixed with acid mixed with like a spiritual reset. How you, how you know? I, I just I thought you straight eggs. <laughs> I've never tried it. You know, but everybody, everybody that comes in here, when they get to that point, they they need a reset and they get to the point where you know they don't want to go down the drugs they don't want to drink and they want something that's a little bit more yeah he doesn't wanna, he doesn't drink yeah, he came out of it doesn't drink doesn't party doesn't resets but, you but nothing but now he did that drug and now he's a totally different person totally different it's person. an experience not just a drug it's a, yeah, it's, it's like a, process. a it's a journey yeah and it's, it's a different. lifelong journey yeah yeah <laughs> like i mean he's he, he is a to he's a vegan now like he came out of it vegan no more drinking. It removes your ego. He's like the most perfect human you'll ever talk to now. It's wild. How are you, how are you perfect? Are you a vegan? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's fair. He gives me, I mean, if I have a Red Bull or something like that in front of him, like we're working the desk and we're real tired. If I have something that has stuff in it that he doesn't mm. think is good for your body, I mean, he'll he'll read you the right act right there. Like, you no. know, take care of yourself. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Me and Rashad, we go through different phases. Like, we, we've been cool because we did a movie together mm -hmm. and we got close. And he told me about these crystals that um they're shaped like a pyramid mm -hmm. and i listened to him and i brought some i think he sent me some i brought some i put them next to my bed and, and i and i'm like okay if it's good i'm gonna get some for my kids my kids made fun of me but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i like pyramids because i'm from memphis so yeah. i 
I got them and I put them in the bed. And he gave me something for the cell phone that, that blocked the. Oh, yeah. The, um, that's 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 a that's him all the way through. Yeah, life. yeah, yeah. He's, he's a, like he, real big into like microdosing mushrooms for brain health, and he's still he's still a druggie. I, I mean, if Why you ask him, he's trying he's trying My, to fix they, his they, brain. They think that's like organic mushrooms. From the mushrooms is a drug. Like this, like it comes from the earth. Marijuana is a drug. It comes from the earth. I know, but I think a lot of people use mushrooms. I'm not saying I I've never tried it, so I can't speak. But I'm just saying a lot of people I know use it as a substitute for weed or alcohol as a way to organically try cocaine to- is a drug <laughs> cocaine comes from the earth is 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 a coca leaf right yeah it's and probably it's a, not good for you though is well it's probably not probably not but but you saying mushrooms is good for you maybe i mean that's what the yeah. research is saying that's what, and rashad owns like a couple of mushroom companies he Does has he? this real good tea he's a drug you know, pusher you know, like, <laughs> rashad maybe. evans is a drug pusher he might be he might be i had no idea it that depends rashad on who was, you are he might yeah. be a he, he might be a I don't know, visionary. I need, to call, a lot of people. I, I need to call Rashad up and yeah. uh, I need to call Rashad Evans up and say, Rashad, I can't believe that you're a drug You need pusher. to get some we of his tea. You, got, you need to get some of his tea. What? What you got? Mushroom tea? It's it's pretty good. Now, I don't want to become a vegan. So the, the first time I ever took the, I drank the the mushroom tea with Rashad. We we're working the desk in Vegas and he brings it in. And he's got the hot water and he puts the little, you know, tea bags, things in there and we're drinking it. And it was, I, w- I was like crazy relaxed and we're just having this like, real deep conversation about life and like what the meaning of it is. And I look over and Rashad is on. So it was like, I had like a two bedroom and he was across the hall. He comes in, we drink the tea. He's on the other bed and he's got, he's like backwards on the bed. He's got his like butt to the wall and his feet up on the wall. <laughs> and he's like doing this. He's just the Zangus. T- I mean, I mean, what's yeah. the dude name from? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just telling me about life. And I don't know, man. He's just, He's always he's always got a really good perspective, dude. I, what I would have given to be a fly on the wall. He's yeah. in, is he in there stretching? Oh, yeah, on the yeah. Wall and he's doing yeah. all this and but it, like y'all it's, teabagging it's, each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild, man. He's got great advice though. Like whether it's business or career or coaches or what do you, what, what I should do with you know like where there's contract negotiations with you. Like he's always anytime I got a problem, I can always reach out because wow. he's you know like you guys have been through it all way before I have. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah, he, he does cool. seem like he's different. I didn't know the DMT would change your whole personality mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, he I calls mean, it the toad. Yeah, because yeah, it's like a toxin. Oh, uh, he licked the toad. Well, no, I think they scrape it off the toad and then dry it and then they smoke it. They smoke it. Or, so I mean, it's like a yeah, toxin off of a it's special a process. frog. It's a process. They're doing it with yeah. someone who's trying to help them. A lot of people use it for depression, to be honest. Uh, and okay. that's where it kind of really took off in the U.S. because mm-hmm. people are trying to get off opioids and, and pills and all these things and pharmaceuticals. And so they I think kinda, a lot of like veterans for PTSD. Uh, do I, it too. I've heard about ayahuasca. Yeah. I ayahuasca. think it's very similar. Ayahuasca. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Similar, I think it's very similar. Oh, okay. It's a process. And it's like a guided it. journey with, you know, someone that's a professional that, mm-hmm. you know, takes you through. I have a close friend. He helps me out and cooks for me and stuff like that. And, and um, he um, talks about ayahuasca all the time. Ayahuasca. 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 Yeah, yeah he crazy. talks. He says it's a, it's life changing. Yeah. yeah, my I'm, wife is uh, is native, and so like I always like pay attention. Like her family doesn't really do it, but it's a big Native American mm-hmm. thing when they get in those little sweat huts and smoke all the weird stuff. Yeah, crazy. Have, have your wife ever given you peyote? No, <laughs> no, no. She's a straight edge. No. Have you yeah. tried shrooms, mushrooms? Like no, a no, ju- bar, ju- a little pill. No, just the microdosing. Yeah, yeah, just the small amounts. A little bit. I mean, just does it bit. does it set you right though for a fight week? Take away anxiety or a- any nerve or what? No, is it I think I've never done it leading up to a fight. I kind of need that that little bit of an edge and oh, okay. that anxiety just a little bit. If I'm too relaxed, I'll end up looking like I was with Johnny Walker. <laughs> I want to have that. I want to ask you about being married and stuff because um, I was only married for like less than a year during my my fight career. Most most of all my fight career, I've been, I've been single. Uh, I married like a Japanese woman, mm-hmm. and and I had like um, maybe like a couple of fights in Pride while I was with her. Um, and like when you married and stuff, and you know, and you training for your fight, do you do you um, practice like what you call it? Like celebrate? Are you be celibate in your training camp? Uh, no, not really. I got four kids, though. It's easy to do, anyways. What? So <laughs> it's not like we're hanging out like that much, anyways. But I, I do my training camps in Denver. Oh, so away from your wife? So I'm away, anyways. Oh, so yeah, you yeah. you don't have sex for like what six weeks? Well, I'm back on the weekend, so I mean, it's here and there. So how long would yeah. you stop having sex before your fight? I wouldn't. You would have sex like the day before your fight? Yeah, I would. It never bothered you. Mm-mm. Oh damn. no, there they was that. Uh, what was that show back in the day? Houston Alexander was on it. What was that show called? Mythbusters? Fear Factor. Oh, no. He was, was on like... Sports Science. Sports Science. There was Sports Science, and then there was like Mythbusters one. and Sports Science. Both did like this thing where it said they took like high-level athletes, 
like tested all their levels before, then sent them back with oh, their wives and stuff, yeah. and then had them do it all again the next day, and they were actually better the next yeah. day afterwards. I believe that, but yeah. uh, like my my coach, my boxing coach, he's old school. You know how old school boxing, yeah. they don't want to no, mess no. up your legs. For a month. From, yeah. From the UK, he be yelling at Rampage. <laughs> put down that, put down that. I, couldn't, that. I couldn't do it, but I can tell you this. When I was married, I had to fight this one Japanese guy. I can't remember his name. Might have been Yu Dong Sik, but I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, she had just had a baby, so I couldn't have sex for six weeks. This is my first time going to a fight, not having sex for six weeks. And I remember I was... What, what's, what's the problem? No, no. I... I, I <laughs> I remember that um, I, I used to be totally against the the, um, the rules in pride when you stump people in the head. Mm -hmm. I used to be against that rule, but I was so vicious. In you were fight. so mad. Oh, yeah. I was just on another level. I was like Why were you animal. against that rule? No, I don't mean to cut your story out. Uh, you I, didn't like it? I, yeah, I just thought it was, I, you know, I, I don't know. I thought, even though I'm a brawler, I come to the sport as a brawler, I just thought that it was like too animalistic or something. I just, I was against it. I never stumped people in the That's head until, until that fight. I was, wild. I kicked his ass out. So what you did to Arona was fine. Yeah. But the stomps were too much? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's yeah. not weird to you? He nailed it. Come on. He Come on now. Uh, listen, I I, if, I, if I had to choose, I would much rather be stomped in the face than to be way up over your head and dumped on, the, on my back like that. Okay, the thing, the thing that I did with, with Arona, it has a story. And that was my first time ever losing my temper in a professional fight. I've never lost my temper before or after. And when I lose my temper, I get unlimited strength. That's why my <laughs> that's true story. Really? Yeah, that's why my that's why my cousin named me Rampage. I'm the nicest guy on the planet, but I have the worst temper. And and I've learned to control it over the years. But what Arona did to me was I was supposed to fight Arona um years before or sometime before in uh, um in a tournament. And I, I ended up having to fight Mar his teammate. Uh, Busamante, mm -hmm. and I didn't find out that I was fighting Marulo Busamante until I got to Japan. So oh, I, you flew all over there and didn't know. I thought, yeah, I thought I was going to fight Arona, and even though they both jujitsu guys, still a different style of a fight. Right. And in Pride's contract, when your opponent pulls out last minute, you're supposed to fight a lesser opponent. Right. And he was not a lesser opponent. He had just beat Chuck Liddell or something. He was champion, and he had mm -hmm. a fight with the UFC for more money. Kind of like that rule. It's a great rule, right? Yeah. And so, and so. And he said he he hurt his knee. I went to the I was walking to the Seven Eleven, and I and I'm I'm going in. Arona coming out, and he's just walking normal. Then he sees me like oh, then he saw limping. limping. Yeah, and then I look at his <laughs> knee. He got two X's with band aids on his knee. Nothing nothing's wrong with him. So that was the first thing. And then when I'm fighting him, he's healing me in the face, and he dislocates my jaw. My jaw like come out of socket a little bit, mm -hmm. and so I go down because he's fell and fell. How you say that word? His legs is flailing. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I got nigga lips. When I talk, don't do that to me. And he and he needs he needs me in the in the, in the in, I mean he elbows me uh, heals me in the, in the jaw and I go down. I'm not covering. He tells the, the referee he's knocked out. He's knocked out. And I was and the referees hated me. He's always giving me yellow cards. Mm -hmm. The referees hated my guts in pride for some strange reason. So I got mad and I said, oh, that's a, that was the last straw. So he put me in a triangle. All he had to do was let go. All he had to do was let go. Right, that's kind of on him. It was on him. Yeah, that's so, on him. So I didn't see nothing wrong with what I did because it was just like a one-time thing. I didn't know I was going to knock him out. I didn't know, but I used to always do that in a, in, a, in a training room to get out of, right. that was like my last ditch to get out of um, triangle chokes. I have a couple of different ways to get out, mm -hmm. but that was like my last ditch right. to get out. And like I when you're stuck, stuck. Yeah, when you're stuck, stuck. I didn't know that it was going to knock him out. I had no idea. I just, I just, I did want to end him because he yeah. hurt, he, 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 he could have cost me that fight. And and I could and I almost lost that fight with Marillo. I was in a tournament. Yeah, Marillo, um, he he almost guillotined me, and everything. Marillo right. was really tough. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, and especially on like short notice when you don't know you're fighting him, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. But do you think the you think the the head stump is better? Like better no, than well, okay, no, but I don't see the I don't see the stop the head stomps being more brutal than like. That slam, man. Those you, you didn't see the way uh, Vanderlei and Shogun them was stumping. Yeah. They would you could jump on people's heads. That was when, I remember Vanderlei had like the hold of the ropes. That's illegal. And have someone in the corner, and it was it was nasty. You can you can literally jump on people's heads, and it wasn't illegal. Yeah, I don't know. The yeah. head, okay, the kicks to the head of a grounded opponent, I'm okay with. The stomps is different, I guess. Yeah, the stomp. You can you can have yeah. you, you haven't you seen like um the one with the Kumitang? You ain't seen the movie with, with um, Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. stuffed the mud hole in that dude's he head. He did. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah, there's, good a, movie. there's a couple of crazy videos in Pride 
of people just getting full soccer kicks to the face, just yeah. full stomped out. Like, I mean, Pride has some amazing highlight reels if yeah. kids want to go see what, yeah. what brawling is. Speaking of, you know, short notice fights, does UFC make you any promises like to take these fights or is this just like a good situation for you? Um, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't do it just for regular pay. I mean, I'm definitely, that's nice to hear. They're definitely taking care of me. Um, some of it's the timing too. Like I like the timing of the fight. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in shape. I feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, the only real issue was the weight cut. They actually wanted me to fight last weekend. Um, but I couldn't make 205 on like six days notice. So I, I offered, I said, I'll do, I want this, this, and this, and I'll have to do a catch weight at 215. And everyone was good with it, but Dana wanted to keep us, Dana doesn't really like catch weights at all. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to keep us in a weight class. He said, we'll do, we'll everything you want, you'll get, but you'll have to make, make, go all the way down to 205 the next weekend. I was like, that's, that's fair. Nice. Yeah, that's fair. So, so, so how does it work? Like walk me through this. Like it's a typical fight week obviously is different from you having to take a fight real quick. Right. So like how, how do you kind of prepare differently? No, it's about the same. Really? Yeah. It's about the same. Um, my weight cut's going to be a little different, but um, you know, I was 235 when they called. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm closer now to where I would typically be at the start of fight week. I'm at maybe, I don't know, three or four pounds heavier than I would like to be, but you know, I'm not a massive 205 er so uh, that'll be fine. Um, and then we'll just go through regular fight week. My, you know, I got the media schedule and all the bullshit we got to do Tuesday through Friday and go fight. Yeah. Now, how this going to work? Were you fighting in, in the desk? Who's going to take your place on the desk with Richard? Um, I don't know who's working this weekend. I think Laura Senko. Uh -huh. Laura Senko took it. Uh -huh. So. Yeah. It's it's interesting though, like walking out to the cage with a guy like your yourself who's been fighting, like Rampage says, you have so many fights underneath your belt. Yeah. Now you're obviously talking about fighting 24-7. Like, does your does your mindset, does the does the dynamic of walking into the cage change? Like, are you looking at different things than you used to? Are you feeling differently because you have such a unique experience, but now you're adding in this fact that you're like a full host analysis, like commentator. Like you have mm -hmm. all that now going through your head as you walk out. Yeah, that kind of messed with me a little bit when I yeah. first started because I would, I would analyze my own fights like I would analyze everyone else on the you know on the cards that I was working, but I had to stop doing that to myself because I would just I would just get so deep into the weeds, and I think it's made me a smarter fighter though. It's not very often that like before we worked before I started working the desk, and I'm sure if you ever watch fights, you would watch whoever you're fighting like how I would do against that guy. Here's what I would do. Here's what I would avoid. Here's what he's good at. But it's not very often we watch fights where here's a guy that said, I don't know, take take Aljamain Sterling and Peter Yan. Like, it's not how I would beat Peter Yan with my style. It's how how would Aljo do it with his game, which is not necessarily going to be the same as mine. So then I have to, like, I have to analyze Alj Aljamain's game, figure out where he's strong, where he's weak, and then see how that works out with somebody else. So it's not very often we watch fights and break them down completely unattached to it. It has nothing to do with us. Um, so I, I feel like I've learned a lot and it's crazy. Like some of the things that some of these guys are doing and some of the athletes that they're in this game, the, the, just some of the things that these people do is fucking insane. Some of it like, yeah. and sometimes I have to like pull myself out of it and say, listen, here's what I do. I can't do it like that. Mm -hmm. But like, sometimes I'm like, fuck man, I, I don't know how I'm going to hang with some of these guys. Cause some of the stuff they're doing is crazy. You watch really? a lot of fights now, huh? A lot. Yeah. It's part lot. of your job. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every card I've watched probably the last four fights of every single guy in the card. Do you watch them more than once though? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I try to, I watch like sequences more than once. Like a lot of times, like, you know, they got this whole program on the iPad and I'll sit in my hotel and I'll just like, I kind of fast forward through a lot of it. Cause there's a lot of bullshit and filler that's in fights. It's a lot of like jab and circle and throw a leg kick. Like I don't really care about all that stuff, but when they start getting into wild exchanges and grappling exchanges and wrestling and like really intricate, you know, like boxing combinations, then I'll just slow that down. I'll go back and forth over that a bunch of times. So if I watch a 15 minute fight, it might only take me 10 minutes to watch oh, it. Okay. That's cool. And do you feel like you're picking up on a lot of technique and things that most people or yourself would never have seen now that you're like actually analyzing film all day? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that people just do naturally that sometimes when I watch the fights and I hear people talk about it, like they make it seem like we're doing things so and so much more intentionally than we are. There's a lot of things that are just instincts. So if someone throws something at me and my natural instinct was just to slip on the outside and throw a leg kick, 
it's not like I seen that coming and I thought to myself, step outside, slip it, throw the leg kick. It's just a lot of that stuff is just instinctual. And if you were to ask a lot of those fighters, like, oh, do you remember when this, this, and this happened? They can't, they couldn't tell you. They right. would have no idea that they did it. That's, that's a great point. I never thought about that. I have no idea. Like, I remember Dan Hardy after I fought Alexander Gustafson at the very, like, towards the ending sequence. Um, Gus threw like a straight right hand and I slipped, I just slipped on the inside and he went for a body lock and I just knee bumped him and just threw his whole balance off, went to a body lock, took him down, took his back and choked him. But Dan Hardy kind of really harped, like, look, well, as soon as he came in, Anthony knew right away to throw that knee. I had no idea. <laughs> it was just a natural reaction. We got, in the, we got in the clinch. I mean, how many times have you drilled, clinch, bumped the knee and turn him? Like, it's just, it just an instinct. I just did it. That happens more often than I think we as fans want to admit. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we make us, we build ourselves up to seem better than we actually are. A lot of it is just our, that's just our natural instinct. Yeah, that's why I won't coach. I, I, really? I don't know. I will never coach and I could never sit there and be an analyst and watch people fight and break down fighters because I don't know why or how I do any of the shit I do in there. <laughs> I just I just do what my coaches tell me. I'm the type of fighter, whatever I drill over and over on the pads, that's that's mm-hmm. what that's the combo you get knocked out with that fight most of most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, whatever I wrestling and stuff I drill and jujitsu and stuff I drill in my training camps. That's that's basically what's what's going to happen in the fight most of the time. I don't know why I do any of the stuff I do. Do you, do you have to do any spe- special, specific style drills just for, like, the fighter you're fighting against? Like, does your coach put together something specific? Like, hey, let's work on this one combination? Um, not not too much. A lot of times, the, the stuff that, you know, Danny and, and Mark Montoya add into my game, they don't even tell me there's a re- – like, they don't give me the reason. I don't need the reason. I just need to, like – if he goes here, I'm going here. That's all I need to do. Got and it. I just drill that over and over and over. I don't even really give a fuck why. It doesn't matter to me. I just do what I'm told. Um, I'm assuming but, they're watching film, though. And yeah, that's, take, yeah, take, yeah, yeah. I just I leave, leave that to, to them. them. I leave that to them. Because uh-huh. then I'll end up with, like, the John Jones thing. I, that was, I, I didn't watch film for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then when I was getting ready to fight John, I watched a lot of John's film. But then I go in there, and I'm like, now I'm watching a movie. It's like, now I'm, I'm like, oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Like, well, I'm not doing anything about it. I'm just watching him, you know? Like, so I recognize everything. I, nothing seemed new, but I'm not doing anything about it. It's like I'm waiting for shit to happen that may or may not ever happen. Right. It, did it Did it worry? Did it, you know, it's like, while you watching his film and stuff, was you, like, worried about stuff? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. And then when I got in there, there was stuff that I was really worried about. It was no big deal. So I wasted all that time worrying about it. Yeah. Um, so crazy. When I, fought, when I fought Ryan Spann the first time, I, I didn't watch any film, but I had worked one of his fights. And he had the, he just got a nasty right hand. He's got a nasty jab. He knocked Dominic Reyes out with a jab. He's knocked several people out with his nasty right hand. And just because I had worked to that, that card and he was on it, I remembered, I remembered it. So the whole training camp, that's all I was fucking worried about. I was like, what am I going to do? What if he throws the right hand? What the fuck am I gonna do about it? Like, and then like, so then Mark and Danny, they're like, dude, what are you talking about? It's the same right hand that every fighter in the world throws. Like, why are you worried about that one? Well, it's because I'd watched it over and over and over, and I talked about it on the desk, and like I'd made it bigger in my head than it was. And then when I got in there, it was not that big of a deal. Yeah, I did that with Vanderlei Silva when the um, first time I fought him. I watched all his fights, mm-hmm. and he hadn't lost a fight in five years. And I watched from like the beginning. They showed me they get they made a tape of him. And um, I always knew I could beat him, but uh, I had my cover and roll that, that helped me out in my career. But I always thought he was too fast. So uh, I'm supposed to fire back after three punches. Mm-hmm. But with him, I didn't. And he he grabbed my head and, and kneed me. And yeah. it was all from watching his film. After that, I didn't watch nobody else. Never? No. Nope. Never again? Never again. I didn't watch yeah, no the, more films after that. I didn't forever. But and then I, you know, I thought, well, I'm about to fight John Jones. Maybe I should... Really dig into this. No, it was the dumbest idea ever. Over, over yeah. pressure, anxiety, the whole yeah. thing. I didn't. I watch just paralyzed that. myself. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I just paralyzed yeah. myself because then I, I, I recognized it all. It just, what's the point of seeing it if you're not going to do anything about it anyways? Yeah. You know. I didn't even really know who John Jones was when I fought him. I just know he was a kid that was undefeated, and he was That's smashing, crazy. smashing folks. <laughs> New yeah. kid. I didn't watch none of his. None That's of crazy. I, I let my um coaches. I let my coaches watch the film, and then I do what they tell me to do. Yeah, I don't think I really watched. I watched a little bit of, I think, like, every once in a while, they'll show me clips, like, if I'm not understanding something. So if they're saying, you know, when he, he likes to do this, here's what we're going to do about it. And, like, I remember when I fought Shogun, 
Like, I didn't quite get what they were talking about. So they showed the little clip. I was like, oh, man, this is stupid. I should have never watched that. You, you knocked him out, though, didn't you? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. I saw them. Yeah, that was a good knockout. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a yeah, big fan of Shogun. Knockouts. Yeah. I got a couple, yeah. Yeah, you have a couple yeah, great I got a knockouts. Couple. I always wanted to rematch Shogun. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I saw he posted something a couple of months ago. It was all in Portuguese, but it had somebody tagged me. Oh, he tagged me, and like he wanted to fight me again. But I couldn't read it. It was in Portuguese, and I tried to press translate. It was like Shogun shit. called you out in Portuguese. I think so. He, you gonna he, take it? I would. Uh, that's the fight that I want. Because when I fought Shogun, I was injured. I had, I had, um, I didn't have people to spar with. Like I was fighting Vanille, sparring with jujitsu guys, and then I had to fight Ninja, and I had to fight Shogun, and um, my coach. I get, he was just, he was just being a dick at that time. He brought like this, this one um, um, kickboxer. Mm -hmm. a heavyweight kickboxer or something out to um, spar with me and every time I throw the right hand he would low kick my ankle oh yeah and he and he kept doing it and one time he did he just sprung my fucking ankle then I mm -hmm. it was like it was like in the middle of camp I still had like um three or four weeks left yeah, and so I couldn't run it, could, it took me a while to heal up I had to ice my ankle and tape it all up I couldn't could barely walk by you know I didn't like to pull out of fights mm -hmm. you know I got four or five kids I don't like pulling out I just go <laughs> you know what I'm saying I just go well I didn't get the same Shogun that everyone they, they, like you guys yeah. got yeah. I didn't get the same one yeah. Yeah. that's yeah, people, for sure I'm, people, I'm, I'm, I think sometimes guys in the game don't want to admit that sometimes like it's easy to say well yeah I beat Shogun and you know Shogun beat this guy and this guy but that's not the same Shogun I got I got him later on in his career. Yeah, Shogun sure. was younger than me when I fought him. He was he was he was newer, and I didn't think he I didn't think he had a chance. But uh, I knew I wasn't I, I wasn't in in shape, and we had ten a ten minute first round, so I was worried yeah, about crazy. that. And I was like, ah. Oh. And those guys, they had great cardio. They was go, they would go full bore for ten minutes, and nobody was doing that. And I didn't know anything about. And they were uh, just fighting in the gym, right? Yeah, like but, those old but, days. but but there's rumors that they was on a, a, a cardio drug. Oh yeah, back then and I didn't know anything about any of the performance enhancing stuff back mm -hmm. then. And there was rumors, so I can't I can't say. It was, right. I got to say allegedly. Yeah. We've all heard them. Yeah, yeah, you heard them. They, yeah, we all heard them. And I didn't think they was on steroids or nothing because they didn't look like the guys that was on steroids mm -hmm. over there. But somebody said like, oh, I think they was on EPO because they don't get tired. Mm -hmm. And and it they, was crazy that a lot of people like never got tired with ten minute rounds. Yeah, At, like there was a lot of people that never got EPO tired. EPO will do that to you. Yeah, but um, <laughs> the way I did it was I trained I trained for twelve minutes mm -hmm. for a ten minute round, and we had uh, I had a new guy. Coming in, uh, uh, every um, what two minutes? That's crazy. Uh, two minutes of I can't remember. It's been years now. Two minutes yeah, or twelve minute round. So where, where was that camp? <laughs> That'd be rough. Yeah, I had I had camps in Big Big Bear. Here I was training in Big Bear. After after I fought Sakuraba, I, uh, I I immediately came back, and I went to Big Bear to help Tito Ortiz train, and that's when I learned about Big Bear. And um, after that fight, I had to go to um, back to Japan. I fought this guy named. Alexander Atsuka. You guys might not know him. I don't think he went to mm -hmm. Pride, but it was it was the same company as Pride, but it was a pro wrestling show. Uh, uh, and we was the only real fight. Everybody else was doing pro wrestling. And pro wrestling in Japan is different from pro wrestling here. It's, it's more like MMA. Right. And uh, it was a 10-minute round and two fives, and I fucked him up. And, and I got tired with Sakuraba. Was two fives after the 10-minute round? Yeah. I thought it was just one. No, 10 minutes, then two fives. Oh, hell But we get two-minute round break oh two minute breaks yeah and i fucked them up and i didn't get tired because i was coming from big bear yeah and i didn't even get tired like because normally in, in the 10 minutes you still get tired mm -hmm. but you still go you know what i'm saying but i trained in, in big bear i didn't get tired and i fucked them up and they 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 thought i was going to gas out like i did with sakuraba yeah and i fucked them up like it, i was going strong and and he it lasted it lasted like the whole first 10 minutes i thought that he quit they they rang the bell and I was like, put my hand on the referee's mat. This is why the referees didn't like my thing. I put my hands up like, yeah. He was like, you didn't win yet. It's just in and around. I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> he came back out. Right. And I fucked him up. They threw him in the towel. I already <laughs> won. With I, thought, hey, I fucked him up. And I was like, and he got mad at me. You didn't win yet. I was like, oh okay. Yeah. All right, bring him back out. <laughs> Let's go again. Up. Going into this weekend, obviously, you know, you want to stay focused. You have a big yeah. fight. But break this down for me. And I think a lot of people on the internet want to know, and respectfully, truthfully, honestly, I want to know, what's the beef with Alex and, and what's going on? Is there a beef with the light heavyweight champ? Do you, does that stem from something like, you know, you're you're a pretty big name right now in UFC and MMA community. I think people want to know. They want answers. You go ahead and answer this. I got people. Yeah, that. I got you. So the, the thing with Alex Pereira is the weirdest thing in the world to me. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. I've been nothing but complimentary of his of his style. 
But at the, at the end of the day, I'm also an analyst. So, like, he's being a bit sensitive. Like, he's being a bit sensitive. He's in his feelings a little bit because I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you where you're great. He's a fantastic striker. He's got incredible leg kicks. He's adjusted to the game really, really well. Uh, he's magical on his feet. He truly is. But when he moved up to 205, does he enjoy the same size advantage that he had at 85? No. Does he have the same power? I don't think so. We just watched him in a fight with Yuri where they were going back and forth battling, and Yuri took a lot of those shots. No 85ers were taking those, those shots from him. Mm -hmm. He lands one of those, everybody goes down and goes out. That's, that's all I was saying Yeah, was that there's some things that he enjoyed at 185 that he doesn't at 205. I didn't say he wasn't great. I didn't say that I wasn't yeah. impressed by him. But then he gets all offended by it and gets mad. And, and I think that some of it is a there's a language barrier there. I think it's not translated as, as cleanly as maybe I said it. Um, so you said it in the booth. You didn't say it as a fighter. No, right? I said it Which like Anthony said. when I was getting ready to I was in Singapore. Yeah. Um, and I was in my media day and someone asked about it. And I said, well, this dude's great. Here's where he's great. But here's some problems I think he may run into. Will he? I don't know. But there's a potential for him to have some problems here. But I'm also like a grown ass man, too. So if you're going to be mad about it, like, go fuck yourself. Like, come do something about it if you're that mad about it. You know what I mean? And that's that's where the beef really come started. Get some. And I and I reached out to Glover before I said anything like he got all he got all pissy about what I said. Uh, did he when I, message you or DM you? No, no. He just he did a bunch of interviews and yeah. did it like a put yeah. a video on his uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Essentially, you know, talking shit that he was mad about what I said. So I. I call Glover and text him and say, hey, what, what is this? And Glover didn't really know, so I just responded. And, and, and essentially what I just told you, like, with all due respect, I have a lot of respect for his game. I think he's a great champion. I think he does a lot of things well. But, like, we can settle this if you really want to. Like, come fucking do something about it if you're so worried about it. Would you like, fight him? I would fight him today in the parking lot here. Glover Tetrachan? No. No, No, I'm not fighting Glover again. <laughs> no, he beat the shit out of me. Yeah. Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira. That's yeah. that. That's that Indian guy. Well, he's not Indian. He's native. I mean, he's that's that native Brazilian. Brazilian guy? native. He's yeah, a yeah. Brazilian native. To I mean, yeah, the proper I, terminology. I never Brazilian. met. Is he? A, is he a dick? I, I see. That's the thing too. I don't think so. I, I think he's think a nice so. guy. He, I think he's a nice guy. I've ran into him and Glover a lot, yeah. like in backstages at weigh-ins and yeah. pay-per-views, and like they're they're joking around with each other. They're laughing. Like he seems like he's got a pretty good sense of humor, yeah. but I also think he understands the game. So I think that. I, I think he's done a good job marketing himself. And if he takes a shot at, I don't know, whoever in the division, like if he's talking trash to Magomed on Goliath, is that going to get much traction on his YouTube channel? Probably not. If it's oh, about, so, if so it's about me, clout chasing. if it's about me and I respond, yeah, he's going to get a bunch of, he's going to oh, get a wow. bunch of traffic on his YouTube. Does channel. he understand English though? Yeah, no. I, I, enough, sure. I think. I enough mean, to be mad about Google it. Translator. Yeah. Yeah. Enough to be mad about it. I mean, as a, as an, and, but but I get why Analyst. he gets gets upset. Like, yeah. if he was analyzing my game and yeah. saying like, "Well, I think he sucks here, and I don't think he's very good here," and like, I'd probably be pissed about it too. Like, I, so I understand. Yeah. But it's that's my job. So when he says things like, "You just need to keep your mouth shut," like you're an idiot. Yeah. I'm literally being paid to talk about your game. But that's what I'm like. That's I don't what know what you want me to out. do. Like, that sorry guys, I can't talk about it because Alex is gonna get mad. Like, fuck off. I got I got mad at Joe Rogan for some shit like that, though. That now me and Joe Rogan don't have like a, a relationship. But he's anymore. an analyst. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It mm -hmm. wasn't like at a fight. It, you weren't fighting, right? No. When you said it. You said it as an analyst. Well, no, no. The, I was asked a question at my media day when I ah, fought in Sing when I fought media. in Singapore. Okay, okay that yeah. makes more sense. Because yeah. a, lo a lot of the comments. And, and then when I worked his comments. every every time he's fought in the UFC, at least the last five, I've worked that card. Mm. So then I, but that's and I I don't, yeah. I don't understand like. I, I did it too, so I guess I do understand. Mm -hmm. But like, do you want me to just go up there and just and just ride your nuts the whole time? Because I'm not going to. Like, I'm going to be honest with the people. Here's what I see. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But here's what I think. And yeah. you got to you got to respect that. No, you have to respect that he's an analyst. Like, let mm -hmm. him do his job. Obviously, you said it as a fighter, so right. that that's the split. But he's allowed to say whatever he wants. He's we just right happen now. to be if in the same smoke, division. Some, would yeah. he would he be in that? Would he be that upset if we weren't in the same division? Right, I don't right. think so. I think that's probably. I think what, that's something. He also yeah. did on a YouTube page, which he knows is going to get media. It's going to get attention. It's going right. to get. I mean, it's also that everybody's learning how to sell fights. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that would be a massive fight. Yeah, and he knows that. He knows that. He knows that. And everybody would get paid. So maybe right. let everybody get paid instead of taking it to Instagram. Let's see who's really about it. Well, and I just and I use that Uncle Ayaf example all the time. Like if 
if he wanted to get in this dust up with Uncle Life over online, it's going to go nowhere and it's going to make him zero dollars. So like he's a businessman as smart. well. Yeah, it's he's smart. a smart guy. So like I don't take it as personal as maybe it seems from the outside because I understand what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the, you know, and obviously this is a podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on social mm-hmm. media. So we read comments. We listen to the fans in the mm-hmm. community. Obviously, I'm not a fighter, but I grew up in this you know, world and kind of being best friends with this guy for 10 years plus and all these other guys, I love fighting. So as a, as a fan, I'm not speaking as a, a fighter, mm-hmm. but as a fan, it looks to me like this guy's, you know, I would say Thanos power of being able to just cripple dudes within a second in that 85 division is not the same as that 200 plus division. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like I could see where he's coming from. It's, it's true. I mean, he just went toe to toe with someone and someone was eating his punches. Anybody else in a, that lower division was just falling and, Right. He's I mean, dismantling he starched I mean, everybody that's at 85. A fact. Yeah, that's yeah, a fact. Yeah, yeah. Anybody he touched, he put down. Is that talking bad, though, or is that and just then a he, fact? But then he goes and fights Jan Blachowicz, and he's a little bit tentative. He's a little bit – he didn't carry it as well. His conditioning wasn't exactly where it was mm. before. And, and it was at altitude, so I'll give him that. Yeah. And I did – I think I when I yeah. – when I, the thing that he's all mad about, I think I did say, well, it's at altitude. It's a little bit different. But Jan didn't react the way that everyone else did. Yeah, I'm thinking he don't understand yeah. English as well yeah. as you think. That's what I said. Like, because yeah, well, you mix, you know. Um, what well, I, then he, then I said that, and I said, well, maybe there's a, a language barrier yeah. there, and it's not as cleanly translated as I right. as I said it. Did he get offended? And then like, he got offended by that. Yeah. What yeah. he said like, about Dan, that? He just, well, I know what he's talking about. Like, come <laughs> on, bro. You can't get offended when you don't so, speak the like, language. I'm trying to clear. I'm trying to clear this up, but I, but I'm also not not trying to get in the dust up with you. Like, I'm not trying to. I would love to get in a fight with you, so I'm not gonna like. I don't like I don't like what I'm what I say to be taken out of context, mm. but it being taken out of context benefits me anyways. Right. So like I'm kind of in this weird, like but do you feel this like, weird imbalance where that's not exactly how I meant it, but it could actually work out for me if you do think that. So yeah. like whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, do you feel his power at, at what he had compared to where he's at now in this new weight division? Is it the same? Like, do you feel it's something I mean, you've it, never seen before? If you had to fight him. Uh, you see, this is where we get into these, where he gets all pissed off and goes crazy. Like, no, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not. Probably the, try, he's probably trying to stir the pot, though. No, which I'm is, not, which is fine. No, I'm not. He's not the, the most part, powerful guy at about 205. Who, he he's analyzes not. fights. Like, right. This is what he does for a living. But you, but you honestly sitting here and not stirring the pot, though. No, I don't even know what pot I would be stirring. I'm just saying the guy is like one of the most knowledgeable people in the sport right now, and he's still an active fighter at the top of his game. I know we that, got, that, we that is know. that is kind of rare. Yeah, to we have. gotta know. Yeah, it we is. gotta know the facts from a guy who's fighting. I ask you the same thing. I say, Yo, you think I could beat that guy? You said absolutely not. I turn around. Like I listen to you, <laughs> right? Like I, it's the same thing. Like, do you think his power is the same from 85s to 205? No. No, no not at all. I and, agree. and he's not the he's not the biggest guy at two hundred five. He's not the strongest. He's and he's not the hardest hitter. Yeah. Is he the best striker? Probably. He's pretty insane. He's probably striker. the most you, you, technical kickboxer. He's probably the most accomplished kickboxer in the entire UFC in just straight kickboxing. But he's absolutely the most technical striker at two hundred five. You, you rate his kickboxing up there? He's good. He's good. He's really good. He's, he's, re- the best he's, he's the really team. the only guy that's been able uh, until Sean Strickland was the only guy that was really able to like fight Izzy on Izzy's terms. Like it wasn't like mix in the wrestling, let's clinch, clinch a little bit, let's threaten the takedown to make him be tentative on his feet. He fought Izzy on, at Izzy's game. Bro, but he was way bigger than Izzy. And I, I met sure. Izzy, I never met the uh, Pereira, per- mm-hmm. but I met Izzy in um, in Saudi Arabia and I was surprised how tall he was. Yeah. He's taller than me. Is he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's, he towers over me. I met him at Jake Paul's house. Yeah, he's a big cat. He's a big cat. Nice cat. And, and, and Pereira's uh, way bigger than Way him. bigger than him. And, and mm-hmm. thicker and more massive. I feel like he has like a... How you know How you know he's thicker than, than Izzy? What's up? What's up? No, I'm talking about his structure. Why do you always be talking? You see, you be stirring the pot. <laughs> nah, I'm just the saying. Is I'm, that stirring the pot? You see that? That's I'm stirring just, the pot. I'm just, I'm just asking questions. No, he's just got a, he's got a lot more... It seems like a more durable frame to him. Mm-hmm. Izzy seems like very more athletic, more flexible. Kind of seems like he has a little bit... You know, they just he's a little more different. finesse. Yeah, a yeah. little two different styles. I, I just thought he was too big for. Uh, I thought Alex was too big for eighty fives. The whole for time, sure. I felt like he was I, cheating. I don't even know. How he cut That's that my one. opinion. I, I've never really believed in weight cut bullies, <laughs> but he's about as close to one as you can get. What's that mean? Just where got like uh, people have been. They've been talking about Jalen Turner a lot lately. Like weight cut bully. Weight cut bully, where Jalen's like you know the size of an eighty five, but he hey. can suck himself down to fifty five. Hey hey hey, 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 you watch what you say about Jalen. I love Jalen. He's a Jackson. He, he might, he might I, walk in here. Well, right no, I, I, that's what I, that's what what made me think of it because he fought. He just fought this last weekend, so yeah, yeah. you see a lot of people like, yeah. well, he wouldn't do that to Bobby Green if he was uh, you know well, seventy. But like, if you can make the weight class, you can make the weight class. When I first saw him, 
I was surprised that he was one fifty five. I didn't know. Jalen? Yeah, I didn't know. He, I didn't know he was one fifty. I was riding scooters with him at the last pay per view in Salt Lake City. We're like driving around, uh, riding these scooters around town, and I could not believe how big that dude is. Bro, it's he's insane. massive, and in the way he cuts weight. I mean, he's with Tiki now. Right. That's your man. Yeah. And I, we just watched it with Coach Bobby. He was mm-hmm. in the gym. I went to go watch them for that UFC thing. Yeah. And Rampage's uh, boxing coach was holding pads for him, and Tiki was in there. And I'm like, bro, I just saw you two days ago. I'm like, I don't know how you're doing this. Like, yeah, he's cr- he's crazy good too, man. Yeah, oh, he's bro. good. He's I'm gonna crazy. tell you, I'm gonna tell you this about that fight. Um, I like both of those guys. I yeah, like, me too. I, yeah, I'm I like both. They, they both cool as hell. But then, um, you know, I, I'm gonna be honest. I doing this podcast got me back to watching MMA more because mm-hmm. I kind of like stepped away from it just because I have a short attention span, you know. And I saw Bobby Green the way he was fighting with his hands down. I was like, man, I don't know if he should do that against um, Jalen because he's so yeah. tall he's and so long. Yeah. And Bobby's gotten away with it for a long time. Yeah. Bob, hey, Bobby's yeah. nasty too, though. We got to give him his flowers. Bobby Green, one of the He's best. nasty. Mm-hmm. He's nasty, but you just, you, you're an analyst. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about what I'm saying? Like a guy, I think you're 100% right. Yeah, thank uh, you. See, thank you. I he, didn't say you're wrong. I said give him his flowers because he is, I, I like to speak good on him. I think he was, man. I think he was disagreeing with me. Never. Well, so Bobby is, he's, he's, what makes him so great is his reaction time and his speed and his like, defensive responsibility but that's usually with his hands down and that's how he counters so well because yeah. you don't really see those shots coming from waist level yeah. I, against a guy like Jalen Turner especially on short notice it's right. hard to adjust to that I mean Jalen's what's he like 6'4 6'3 mm-hmm. yeah. 6'3 at least yeah, yeah. I mean that's a that's crazy for range Bobby's not very crazy tall crazy reach you think, yeah. Bob, you think Bobby like unestimated him because it was a last minute fight for Jalen no I no. would have I think that Bobby Bobby's gonna fight whoever the same way I don't. I don't know that matters. I understand Bobby. that, but I'm saying about the, his men, mentality because it looked like he maybe. Was t- I think a lot of people did. I, I. I was kind of. I didn't like what what Jalen was saying during fight week. It made me nervous. What, what? were you saying? Uh, like when they were saying, well, you know, asking about the fight and why'd you do it, and it didn't really seem like he wanted to be there. Mm. He was like, well, I did. You know, I didn't really feel like I had a choice. And then you know, then they start digging in. He was like, well, I turned it down once before. Like he he did turn it down. He I mean, didn't really want between to. the weight cut and the mindset of having to fight someone who comes from the same community as you and understands right, right, the struggle, right. I think that plays a big part. I don't think people understand because we have they're both Jackson athletes mm-hmm. and they were both in here. I've known both of them for a long time. Jalen and Bobby are two guys that do this for their family. They right. do this because they love what they do and they have a passion to want to make their family lives better than what they have. So I feel they both understand that about each other. And then Jalen also has such a great respect for people like Bobby and people from his community that he's like, this is not one guy I want to fight because I, I love what he does for himself, his family, the sport. Right. So I think like you that, want him to you want him yeah, to do well. I think that plays into it. But Jalen also was weight cutting, so he's a little bit tired. His yeah. energy was at all times. Yeah, he had a lot, a lot of weight to cut. Oh yeah. yeah. Go, go when I just didn't like like it. You worry about that kind of stuff though when you see people at media day and they're like, mm-hmm. man, I don't really want to fight him anyways. Like I don't want to be here. You're like damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, now I don't want to watch it because, like, if you don't want to be there, I don't want to watch. You know, yeah. like, I don't want to. I want two people that really want to be in there versus each other, because, it, because, like, we really do this shit. So I get it. There's been times where I haven't just. I don't want to fight that guy. Yeah, right? I feel what you're saying, but sometimes yeah. in my career, I've I've said some things opposite of of the way I was really feeling, and I've you know it was like me testing stuff out, me throwing off my opponent uh, mentally because I, I know how mental the game is. Yeah. So I've 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 done that before and I and, and I and I, I think about it. I was thinking about it the other day, like um, you know, open workout and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I've done it and where I look like look like I haven't been training and I look like yeah. crap. But I don't know if that helped me or hurt me because, you know, because um my opponent watched me like, oh it gives him more of a mental edge, like oh yeah, looks like I'm, some confidence. Yeah, more confidence. But so I don't know if that helps or hurt hurt me. But I've no. done it before. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just seems so genuine. That was that was what was. I don't know. I didn't like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I believe it was genuine. Yeah. Though. yeah, no, it was. He he's a good. He's a stand up dude. He would tell you if you wanted mm. to kill someone or not. Mm-hmm. I got a question though. Like, whenever I know you live in Nebraska, how far yeah. away is Nebraska? Long ways. It's a long way. So yeah. you are you ever out in California? Uh, not often, actually. I'm in Vegas a lot, but I'm not okay. in California that so, often. Well, next time you're in Vegas, let us fly you out here and, and we can do we can watch some fights together and you can teach me how to be an analyst. Oh, you should do that. Huge. Yeah, 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 that'd, that'd be, be fun. Can, I'll do that when he comes back from his fight in Saudi Arabia. Is that yeah. where it's at? Yeah, yeah. When Who are you come, fighting? I might fight this that, that boxer Shannon Briggs. That, you, guys, you guys are finally going to oh, fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're trying to get a I, I love watching, like... You got your guys' yeah. dynamic. Yeah. It's so much fun to watch, man. Yeah, because he, he, I almost be, I'll be disappointed when you guys actually fight because then it'll be over. No, no, I'll keep, I, I like, I want to do a show. I want to, I want to do a show with him at the, at the, I sometime watch show. You guys fight. Really? Yeah, I'm, because he's funny. So, like, do you, 
Do you hate him or not? It's yes. hard to tell. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you might just you know why? You know, yeah, no, because he is funny, but sometimes he's a bit much. He gets annoying. Well, well where were you guys at when you were eating? Oh, yeah, and He yeah. was just David smashing yeah. food. Oh, my God. You look so disgusted. Yeah, yeah. You were pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was pissed because I was because I fast. You know, sometimes when you fast, you'd be hangry. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. And he was he was just he was just talking too much crap somehow. I'm like, that's how you eat. Yeah, when I fight pies like you. And he was dead serious. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, he crazy. talks loud, bro. He talks loud. He came in here. I had them a surprise podcast. They were just going at it for three hours, and then they were out there for another hour. They they really be going at it. That's crazy. Before we like wrap up and get this all going, I appreciate you coming. I know you're about to have a little training camp. You got your team here. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give them the Jackson House for like the next hour. Let them train. Oh yeah, that's shut this up. whole place down for them. I'm gonna rapid fire some names. You just give me your thoughts on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one is Yuri. Yuri. Ah, oh. man, I. I feel bad for that guy. I feel bad for Yuri. I, I, just a shitty deal. Bad shoulder injury, comes back, runs into Alex Pereira. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. He's got a tough style for the division. Paeta. Sensitive. <laughs> Super sensitive. John Jones. Yeah, it was the greatest of all time, unfortunately. Glover. I love that guy. I like Glover a lot. Is he a good guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you see me and Glover's fight? He beat the absolute fuck out of no, me. No, I missed and that. It was, the first, it was the first card back after the COVID shutdown. Mm. Um, I had a, a really, really good couple, like, first two rounds. I don't know what happened. He just, like, developed this. He was having some durability problems there for a while, and he just, like, developed an insane chin out of nowhere. Bro, he, he's I hit, tough. I hit that dude with everything I had. And gas myself, and he beat the fuck out of me. Bro, he's tough. Knocked my teeth right out of my mouth. He's tough, bro. I don't even remember our fight. My fight with him. He, he beat I, the shit out of me. I remember he hit me in the back of the head, and I <laughs> bounced to the ground. And I had to get right back up so they wouldn't call it a knockout. I don't. Re- I don't remember that fight. Yeah, he he beat he's me up pretty good. Yeah, he he's beat tough. me up pretty he's good. Tough, three, three more. Well, names. He, he might be one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Though. I never met him like Glo- that. Glover's one of the nicest. One guys. of the nicest guys you'll ever it's meet. It's good to know. It's good yeah. when MM, MMA superstars like each other and can talk nice of yeah, each other. He's cool. Um, not just call each other sensitive. Uh, Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell. Man, I just... You know what I think about when I think of Chuck Liddell? I think about how Chael talks about Chuck Liddell. What does he say about Chuck Liddell? How he was like... Like Dana manufactured Chuck and like pulled him out. And like I, I watched this show one time on like the Tito Chuck thing, how they were like really good friends and training partners for a long time. Like, I didn't know any of that stuff until I watched that. Uh, I don't know what it was on. It's like a 30 for 30 or so, like something similar to that. Um, so I thought the whole, like, dynamic, how, like, Tito was supposed to be the guy, but Chuck was always the better guy, or at least that's how it was in there, you know, in that dynamic there. Um, but Chill always talks about how Dana kind of created Chuck Liddell's personal. Like, obviously, he was a great fighter, but, like, the, the mohawk with the tattoo on the head was, like, a, a thing that, like, Dana and Chuck created together. I don't know, but I think Chuck always had that mohawk, even when he was fighting before the UFC. I don't actually, I don't, and I don't, yeah. again, I don't know, but that's what I was, that's what I was I, just thinking know, about like you that. You can't trust nothing Chael says. They can't trust shit that Chael says. <laughs> um, BJ Penn. BJ Penn. Man, BJ was, uh, so I'm a jiu-jitsu guy at heart. That's how I started. So I always loved watching, like, BJ do jiu-jitsu. I just wish he would have done that later on in his in his career, not, like, he kind of fell in love with his boxing a little bit and got away from the grappling. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that's what I think about BJ. I love, it. I, I Ty- love watching Tyrone him. Woodley, and one more after that. Tyron Woodley, man. Uh, Tyron is a, is is. I don't know. Sometimes I sometimes I feel bad for Tyron, and sometimes I don't. Like, I I think that what he did in the division for his time, I I think he's in you know top three or four greatest welterweights of all time. Um, I think sometimes he made things tougher on himself than he needed to. You know, he, he, but I think a lot of people ended up in those situations. Like, I don't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say it without sounding like an asshole. Like, I think that Tyron could have maybe got along a little bit easier and better in his, like towards the end of his career, maybe if he'd have gone along a little bit. Does that make sense? Like, I just think he made it tougher on himself. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think he could have done some really awesome things like, post fighting. Mm-hmm. I think the Tyron's got a really awesome brain, but he kind of 
I don't know, leaves himself on the outside every once in a while. I appreciate it. For me, I know you have a fight this week, so I don't want to take up too much time. I know you have camp right now. You got your coaches here, but, you know, Rampage is doing this show. I say it every time. He's doing the show for the MMA community. We're just happy that we've been friends for so long, 10 plus years, and we're putting together this show to bring on all these special guests to build this community around us. Obviously, Jackson's like the number one jewelry brand for men worldwide. It's about confidence, instilling confidence, and I've always felt that MMA and self-defense and understanding how to use your body the right way is the ultimate sign of confidence and the ultimate form of respect. So it really plays into the kind of the ethos and the community we're building here. That's why we have this sports gym now with the performance Mm -hmm. center for you to be able to train. And so I just want to say thank you. It really means a lot for me for you to take time and especially during camp. This is crazy. No, I appreciate you guys having me, man. This is super, this is super cool. Uh, I'm glad I came out. It's yeah, been thanks. a lot of fun. I appreciate it, man. I really yeah, thanks, do. Thanks. Thanks for coming out, even though you got a fight. Because I wouldn't have did it. If I had a fight, I'd be like, fuck that. And I ain't doing no damn podcast. <laughs> so I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> not, not too close to my fight. No, I think it's good to... This fight's in three days. <laughs> no, like the, the fight week stuff, like the work's already done. Yeah. So I just try to enjoy it as much as I can. And yeah. this is cool. Yeah. This is so cool. you got to go to Vegas tomorrow. Go to Vegas tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So All right, I hang out for up. the day. That's it. All right. All right, thank you for being here. It was another exclusive with Jackson Podcast, my boy Bear, and we got Lionheart in the motherfucking building. Can I say motherfucking at the end? You can say whatever you want. Hey, Bear, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> so we got Lionheart in the motherfucking building. Let's go. Good luck to you in your, in your fight. Thank I know you. you're going to smash it. My guy. Hey, thank, thank you for coming. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank you. That's out. We out. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Let us know what you think. But please leave a comment and tell us who you want on here next. We're reading all the comments and we'll be reposting them all on our Instagram at Jackson Podcast. Thank you, guys. Thank you.